Yeah, you've really just got to follow the thing that interests you. Because if it interests you, you've got at least a market of one. And I guarantee you there's going to be a market of a lot more people that are interested in the same stuff that you are. Give people, as you said, like the juice on like what you're working on and get them interested in it. The coolness of it, yeah. like in a certain way, and that was, that's what gets people into them, like them as a person and what they're doing, and then it just creates a larger market. It could be freaking anything. Like yeah. Who knew that I could sit in front of a camera and just draw and then do sculpting? I would have never guessed that I could have been doing any of this yeah. when I was starting at like a, the university. Ben is a software developer turned artist. For most of his 20s, he was doing art on the side while programming as his job. In his off time, he would draw and then post about it on Instagram and share his findings about what he was learning. He managed to build up his following to 250,000 on Instagram and then 70,000 on YouTube. In this episode, we talk about more of the businessy kind of stuff. For example, he made $25,000 in the first month from a product that he released on Gumroad. We also talk about his experience building his Instagram so fast and the things that he did that he feels like set him apart. Thanks and enjoy the episode. Uh, cool. Uh, how you doing, man? Good uh, there. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're going. We're 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 we're, <laughs> we're uh, into it. We're doing the Sketchy Man podcast. I mm -hmm. uh, appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. In the Sketchy office. Yeah. Uh, finally. Um, um, okay. So the way I start these things for anyone that has never seen these before is the point of this is not to talk about how to become an artist or, you know, how to get better or any of that kind of stuff. It's more about the why of doing it. Uh, well, it, uh, did you want to introduce yourself at all for, for the, like the past 10 years? Oh yeah. Um, I guess, uh, hi, I'm Ben. <laughs> um, <clears throat> what was it? I've, I've always like drawn on and off for sort of like most of my life. And, um, like I got, it's just been on and off, like for, for no other reason, just cause I love it. And yeah. I just wanted to get better at it. And I've always like with all sorts of things, I just love the, kind of process of getting better at stuff that's like the fun like really the fun part for me the end result is just like oh that's cool like where's the next sort of challenge but then for the last 10 years i've been um working on like a software company i'm um, an only uh, as like a developer and sort of software designer and then only in the last say like year and a half to two years have i really like has art become like uh my full-time yeah, yeah, gig yeah, yeah, sort yeah, of yeah, thing so thing, right? yeah i've always said like i I've started to say I've kind of come into this industry sort of through the back door yeah. kind of thing. Like it's, 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 right? it's kind of like somewhat on accident. Yeah. Like I always had that thing in the back of my head. It was like, oh, it'd be cool yeah. to sort of figure out um, how to do this stuff. But but yeah, so yeah, very in a nutshell. Well, uh, 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 part of the reason I, I think it's so interesting to talk to you specifically is because I, I, I meet a lot of people who they are curious and persistent on wanting to get into like the industry or the art industry as a whole yep. you know and I think for a lot of people who end up making it it is kind of like haphazardly and almost accidental even the people that do go to art school mm. you know like I, I, what I mean by that is you'll go to art school expecting to be something and you'll come out being something entirely different yeah you know and um the act of you pursuing art as a hobby versus art as a career or something actually probably led to you being more interested in it, and as a result, making things that are potentially more interesting to other people, versus mm. you know the stress of trying to make it a monetary career from the beginning, mm. I, I, I think actually holds a lot of people back from from yeah. doing it. You know, because it's so stressful and there's so much caught up in the in the success and quality of your yeah. Life, you know? Well, when I say that I did it, like I did have that aspiration when I was a lot younger for uh, like working at Pixar. Yeah. and that kind of thing but then I, then that kind of just like faded away as I was like oh I'll just do it for fun yeah, yeah, kind yeah, of thing so yeah. I did have that like inkling of like a bit of a aspiration like one day kind of thing but yeah no I never really um, seriously took it to that point of like okay I gotta get yeah. a portfolio together and blah 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 you know what I mean absolutely so, well yeah, and I think part of a lot of people's success is like finding the process that they could do every day that they want to do, you know, mm. that they're excited about. Cause you know, no one ever told you or instructed you or paid you money to do the things you're doing artistically. It was just like, oh, I'd rather be doing this than playing video games or I'd rather be doing this than, yeah. you know, like watching TV or anything, you know? Yeah. And it was all about trying to find the thing that you were willing to get up out of bed and do kind of like of your own volition, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, and it, you know, I, I guess circling back to the very beginning, it's like the why of it comes in in that sense, you know? Yeah. I think if you don't know why you're doing it, if you're kind of like, like, I guess I'll be an artist, I guess I'll do this, you know? You're, you're, it's harder to like motivate yourself to do like the master studies or anything kind yeah. of stuff because it lacks context. Yeah. yeah, and to be perfectly honest, like I still don't know really why. Yeah. Like, 
It's just fun. It's just fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's yeah, no yeah, like perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, f- I feel like I hear a lot of these artists like they have like deeper meanings and yeah. it's all this sort of stuff, but I'm just sitting there like, right? Does it look cool or not? If yeah. it doesn't, keep working on it. If it does, sick. There you go. It's done. Like it's, it, I don't know whether that's going to change, but really, for me, it's just like having fun with it, and it's just like just fucking do it. If it works, awesome. There's no like. Yeah deeper meaning which could be at a detriment to like my work but at the same time i don't know i can't change how i feel about it it's yeah yeah well and, and, and like, like my, my response to that is generally like I, I don't think people really do know themselves that well mm. you know I, I think that the why is something that you really can't logic through you can't think about why you're doing something you just want to do it or you don't want to do it yeah you know and i i think it's it's like keeping in mind that there's a pretty complicated subconscious inside of yourself that is kind of directing your you're directing you to do certain yeah. things you know and the act of like exercising or you know doing artwork or playing music or trying to start a software company it all i think stems from like a, a deep subconscious desire to to create something you know? yeah well um, really i guess for me it's like if there was one sort of uh common thread between all that is just like to be independent yeah with living the rest of my life you know what i mean like if there's one constant that i've always wanted it's just like even from a very young age it's just like yeah i don't want a boss yeah like i don't want to work for anyone else necessarily like if the opportunity comes and it's a cool thing and i want to do it definitely but it's like i've always wanted to try and figure out how to do stuff like in a solo indie sort of whatever that will be whether it would be software whether it's um art stuff like I think there's a crossover somewhere in the future whatever that will be because I love coding and developing and designing software and that sort of stuff like there's this um I get the same feeling like with like say behind the camera here you got like the drums I get the same feeling of playing drums as I do like like painting and drawing as I do with like sort of developing and and coding and that sort of stuff so like if there's a way to like mix and match all of them together somehow like it's yeah, yeah that's 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 the goal and have it sustain me and even for the business side like figuring out the business side because we go back and forth on that like all the right. time and like I look at that like a game like it's exciting it's not like a drag it's not the, the afterthought necessarily it's a part of the whole piece like the whole thing if you want to get like like woo woo but it's like the whole thing is art you know what I mean the analytics the the social media side the business side the painting side the whole thing is the thing well yeah if that it, makes sense and, like, it, totally, well, it, 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 and it's all connected and I, I i i think the important note there is like you're following your internal interests versus versus following the external stuff you know hmm. you're, you're doing the stuff that's actually genuinely interesting to you versus doing the thing that you're probably told to do you know which is like hmm. if you were in art school you know yeah. uh you know people would tell you oh go do these things you have to go do graphite studies and master studies and oil paintings and you have to go learn 3D modeling, and it like the, the, I I think it like it's totally fine to want to do those things, but for a lot of people, it's very unlikely that the things put out in front of you, if you're in art school or you know at a job or something, it's it's going to be hard to find your own specific voice. In yeah. That amalgamation of classes well, it's funny enough that i've got all the interest in those things like yeah. graphite yeah. studies oil painting yeah. sculpting like all that sort of stuff it ends up that i'm just like really interested in that like i wonder if i was like a part of a curriculum that like sort of forced you to do that and da, 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 yeah. da, whether i become more interested in doing that or would it be like oh i've got to do this and it sort of just like yeah. tweaks that yeah. kind of like oh, i don't really enjoy this and then that sort of follows on yeah. for the for the rest of forever who knows but i did go to school very very briefly like i like i get this question like did you go to art school i went to industrial design like i studied industrial design in university for like a year and the reason that i got into that is because i had like a a drawing program and it was a very short drawing program with this guy called um i think it was richard coker i love this guy like he was an awesome teacher and everyone else was like falling asleep in this class they didn't give a shit but he was like explaining how perspective works he was explaining like how like you make things like i I got really interested in the sort of like industrial design sketching sort of style of like where they use markers and stuff to like get different textures and that kind of i love the look of that and he was telling he was giving me all the secrets on how to do that and then that drawing thing stopped after like i think it was like maybe a year and it wasn't like a full year it was only like part of the week or every other week that we were doing stuff that's when I just quit. I was just like, oh, I don't, 
Yeah. Yeah, that's finished. Then my, my fun's finished. All right, I've got to figure out something else. Yeah. And I did a complete 180 into software. But, um, but yeah, so I did sort of have a bit of uh, structured education in the beginning. But, I mean, I always say this, like, on streams and stuff, when I get that question, it's like, oh, art school and blah, 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 blah. At the end of the day, whether you're going to art school or not, you've got to do it yourself. Like, the teachers are telling you what to do. Yeah. You've got to do the thing and, like, discover the thing that you're interested in within the thing that they're telling you to do yeah. and put your own flavour on it and da, da, da. So, really, the only difference... I mean, this is coming from someone that's never been to art school. From a pure, like, the curriculum standpoint, is someone that's giving you, like, a a, a guide on what to do. Yeah. Like, but then that's not taking, taking into account, like, the relationships and stuff, like, that you'd make in school and that kind of thing. So I'm not, like, poo-pooing it necessarily. It's just, yeah. yeah. Well, I, uh, part of the purpose of those assignments, I, I think, is actually to question it, you know, to figure mm. out, like, what part of the process of a master study do you enjoy the most? Do you enjoy the mm. sketch phase or the you know, the rendering phase or the composition phase or whatever, you yeah. know? And I think uh, that's like the juice of trying to find your career as an artist. It's not necessarily, do like, I think none of the actual results of having an art career are driven from the external, uh, externally like assigned things, you know? It's mm. all like the internal stuff. Like, yeah. you know, do you, you know, there are people that have made careers out of, you know, drawing, uh, anime prints or furries or, yeah. or doing like <laughs> academic studies or it's lucrative baby those furries <laughs> well, but, but, uh, the, the the interesting thing there existentially is that ability to find a career and a path and a sustainable life out of things that are on paper or on the surface or logically a bad idea you know yeah uh, which is i think part of the beautiful part of it is that you can make a career out of like basket weaving or something. You just need to solve yeah. problems, you know. The traditional way, and I think this could, this could be something that software helped me because I was thinking like all the things that I read about that, like I didn't go to school for that either, like coding or anything like that. I just like Googled and YouTube my way onto figuring it out. But it's like a lot of that stuff, even in the tech space, they talk about that and whether that's like slowly now catching up to say like the social media business side of things and that kind yeah. of thing is like, yeah, finding that problem and like marketing and how do you figure that out because like the marketing is just as important for the product like a software product as it is for the quality of the product yeah. right some would argue that i tend to argue that the quality of the product is somewhat more important but they sort of work hand in hand so that might might have helped gear me into that way of thinking when i sort of just tiptoed my way into the art space and like that's how i approach almost everything yeah. that i'm doing it's like again the whole thing is Cyclical, it's right? everything. Yeah, yeah, like it's it's the marketing. Like, what do you like to do? It's like icky. Is it icky guy? It's yeah. like the Venn diagram of like, what do you like to do? Is there a market for it? Yeah. And something else. I can't remember. Yeah. And like right in the middle, it's like boom. That's the thing. And I think that thing changes all the time. Like, yeah. there's there's no set one thing. It's it's such a. I get I get really excited, like talking about like I don't know, like, you know. Yeah. We can talk almost weekly on this stuff, but it's like, yeah, I get really excited for the opportunities of just what it looks like to be like an artist nowadays. Like, it's not the traditional route necessarily. I mean, that's still exciting. That's cool. But it's like, what does it, what does it look like? It could be freaking anything. Like, yeah. Who knew that I could sit in front of a camera and just draw and then do sculpting and then like just do this? Yeah. Like, I, you, I, I could have never guessed that I would have been doing any of this. I would have never guessed that I could have been doing any of this yeah. when I was starting that, like, uh, the university, right. like, industrial design thing. So, yeah, it's like freaking exciting, man. Well, and, and again, I think all part of this stuff is, like, seeing the things that you're doing, the things that are almost, like, assigned to you by the universe as, like, part of the ultimate purpose of what you're going to end up doing. Mm. You know, like, like, the, the, like, even beyond, like, a career. You yeah. Know? Like, you uh, playing baseball, you know, when you were younger, yeah. probably influenced... Your software stuff, with, which inevitably influenced your art stuff, which is going to influence you know something else you do later on. Yeah. I think, you know, if you were approaching all that stuff from an early age, being like, "Oh man, I wish I was just doing the baseball stuff. I wish I'd like, unless I'm a pro, like a pro baseball player, then it's not worth it." You know, I did have that thought though. I get kind of like, I don't know if you have the same thing, but I can get like really hyper focused on something, yeah. like for a very like specific amount of time. And that's what I wanted to do. Like when I was like, I don't know, 12, 13, I was like, yep, Major League Baseball. That's the thing. Yeah. If I'm not that, I'm going to be a failure. Yeah. But I think like at the end of the day, what I really wanted to do was like find my way to go to America. Right. That's what sounded cool to me. But like that was the vehicle to get me to America. 
yeah. to like go and see these like the whole culture of like America and stuff. It's like, oh, it'd be so cool to do that and da 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 da. And then it's like, yeah, so that was like an interesting realization I sort of came to. It's like, I'm, I made it, I'm hopefully by the end of the year, like I did go to America when I was younger, but like, yeah, hopefully by the end of this year, I'll sort of make it to America yeah. and sort of that little 13 year old thinking he was going to get there through baseball. He's like, nah. No, you know no. that thing that you do when you get yeah. home and you just sit and sketch yeah. and then that's where you're actually happy, <laughs> like yeah. doing that stuff? Yeah, that's right. what's gotten you there. Yeah, so yeah. It's, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. And, and that like nihilism or that hyper-focus, I, I think, or, or the like hyper-focus on a specific outcome is ultimately, I think, what holds us back, you know? Mm. Like, I, you know, you hear these stories about these musicians or actors or great artists who, you know, they spent a huge portion of their childhood like working on a farm or, mm. you know, they went through a period of the career where they were like working at different coffee shops or, you know, and I think in the moment it might seem like ex like insignificant or unimportant. Yeah. But uh, like without that step A, you would never be able to get to step B or C or D or, yeah. you know. And you don't know the path when you're doing it. I guess yeah. like, I don't know what I want to do next year. Yeah. <laughs> like the, and that's exciting to me. Yeah. Like I remember when I was like, in like uh, primary school, and I was sitting down and they're talking about like careers and stuff and like jobs and stuff. And I remember like, oh, fuck, like, pro yeah. I wouldn't say that when I was like in, in like, uh, <laughs> whatever, like kindergarten, whatever it was, like year two or whatever. I wasn't thinking like I am now, but it's just like, oh, that sounds so boring. Oh, well, I don't have to worry about it for a long time, so I'm just going to have, like, yeah, yeah, oh, that's yeah, all right. Yeah. And then it gets there and you're like, oh, shit, I've got to figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> try and figure it out later. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it, it's strange because, like, the playing around and kind of puttering around and just being yourself is the thing that's paying the bills, you know? It's weird. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's just, it, it, and that's one of the things that, I'd say, like, if people ask me, like, oh, well, like, how, like, getting into this, like, what, what do you do? It's like, yeah, you've really just got to follow the thing that interests you. Yeah. Because if it interests you, You've got at least a market of one yeah. there. And I guarantee you there's going to be a market of a lot more people that are interested in the same stuff that you are. Yeah. And I reckon it's your job then, in a way, to, to get people, like, give people, as you said, like, the juice yeah. on, like, what you're working on and get them interested in it. Like, and I think that's what, like, the most successful um, sort of content creators and that sort of stuff, they get you interested in things that you might not otherwise be interested in, but they, you show, they, like, unveil, like, the... The coolness of it, yeah, like in yeah. a certain way, and that what that's what gets people into them, mm -hmm. like them as a person and what they're doing, and then it just gets a whole bunch of people interested in the thing, and it creates yeah. a larger market. Like it's all, yeah. Well, and the subject itself is completely arbitrary. You know, like oh, yeah. it could be math or chemistry or, you know, I don't know, uh, like shock pudding or whatever. And mm. like depending on who it is talking about it, I get way more interested in it. You know? Yeah, and I think the ultimate resource there is not the subject. It's not. How talented you are it's the enthusiasm that you show mm. you know your ability to you know make people other people excited about it yeah you know, it's not being the best in the room at all you know yeah um and like like, like a nile red a nile red comes to mind or oh hell yeah, yeah he's awesome yeah you know? i love I don't that give a stuff. shit about chemistry or nah. you know? <laughs> i don't even know i'm not even 100 percent sure that it's bloody real how yeah. he just like goes i'll put a bit of this bit of this bit of this and boom now i've yeah. made like what is it nachos out of toilet paper or whatever yeah, yeah, he does yeah. like i'm yeah. just like what yeah. like it's just something that i've never even thought of right and but i'll sit through an hour video i just yeah. watch the thing yeah like it's fascinating yeah like, absolutely yeah, yeah it's the opportunities are kind of endless, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It? Well, yeah, and it, it always comes back to that like innate trust you have in yourself to do the thing that you care about doing. And, mm. You know, I talk to people all the time about like, you know, that they like the logical side of why, which I, I, I think is often missing the point. Like, you can't, mm. you know, look for happiness. You can't look for meaning. It's mm. like apparently, I, I think meaning is apparently always there in front of you. It's just your ability to kind of grasp at it and hold it, you know? Because yeah. I think we do get sucked into, like, the fear side of things, money, status, you know, jobs, all that kind of stuff. Daily for me. Yeah, like, yeah. it doesn't, no, it's not like, oh, I'm excited about doing I'm freaking right. excited about doing this. But, every, like, without fail, I'd be like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> like, this could go away tomorrow. Yeah. You know what I mean? What's the next thing? Right. What's the next thing? So it's, a, again, a part of the whole game and the whole thing that at least the perspective I'm trying to look at it is like, all right, you've got that feeling of, like, stress and it's a game. Yeah. Uh, all right, what's the thing that's stressing you out? What are the steps to to figure that out? That's another side quest to like, what's the next thing? And it's not like, and it turns it into, yeah, like a game rather than like, a, oh, I've got to get this yeah. going. But I think, yeah, I don't know. 
the whole thing with like meaning and everything, I still don't know. Well, I, I would say it's it's uh, really simple and really complicated. You know, I, like I think like it, it, I found a lot of meaning in exercise. You know, me too. And I would say it's like a, a meaning I can't even articulate. It's just like a I like to ride bike. You know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah I like to lift, lift thing. You know, yeah. and it, it and I, I think it's kind of looking at yourself and being like, I'm a lot simpler than I'm really making myself out to be. Mm. You know, like physical exercise and eating well and all that kind of stuff can bring you a tremendous amount of like, oh, there's a lot of purpose in this. It's making me feel better. Oh. And and the meaning is, is is not like this, like, you know, what's the purpose of life sort of stuff. It's like when you look at, you know, uh, eggs at the supermarket, do you just walk past it? Or or, or you're like, oh, I could turn that into a cake or, or I can make eggs for breakfast or yeah. can, like, you know, do all those different things that would make me happy. And that's the meaning, you know, yeah. that's the purpose. It's not... Um, yeah, it, it, it's not the existential implication of eggs or anything, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. And, like, yeah. on exercise as well. Like, it's... I don't enjoy it, enjoy it. Like, yeah. I enjoy the result that I get from it. Yeah. Like, lifting the thing up and down. Yeah. It's like, okay, it's cool. But it's like, again, that what I said before, it's like the progress. It's the game. It's the skill of trying to figure it out. But then, but then there's an added benefit, added benefit to that. It's, it's that thing helps everything else in my life. Like, yeah. you with your cycling... Like me with like the weightlifting and and like eating eating healthily, it's like that helps all the other stuff. Like helps me play the other games. Yeah. Like better. Right. Like otherwise, like the mental, like the anxiety pops in and da 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 da. When I'm not doing that stuff, a lot more frequently. So it's yeah, just another piece of the the puzzle that yeah. I think uh, like a lot of people know they should be. Yeah, it sounds good to like I'll do exercise. Yeah, I'll do that eventually but it's like yeah it's so important and yeah if you're not doing it just just do it yeah, yeah well, <laughs> it's it, one of those things it's, hard, it's a tricky one absolutely well and, uh you know like, like my idea of faith and god is more of like a you know a faith in like if you do things that you don't want to do mm. sometimes it'll actually make your life a lot better yeah you know? Like exercise is one of those things. Everyone knows logically this will make me feel better, and it takes some amount of faith, a lot of days when you don't want to do oh, it, yeah. to be like, okay, this is going to be the thing that's going to pull me out of this depression or this funk. Or yeah, something, you know, or creating artwork. You know, I think creating artwork takes a lot of faith. Of, I have this, you know, this empty piece of paper in front of me, and it could be a complete piece of dog shit that no one cares about that makes me feel bad about myself, or mm. it's going to be. Uh, something amazing that gets me a lot of money and success and stuff. Yeah. And it's most of the time going to be the first one, you know? Yeah. Um, and I, I, I think the faith comes in in a few ways, like not letting your failures di dictate how you feel about yourself mm. and um, faith that like if you just keep pushing through the fog of creating or exercising or whatever, mm. that it's going to end up being positive, yeah. good, whatever. Yeah. Definitely. And I think like the most exciting kind of activities you can do are the ones that have no barrier to entry or very little barrier to entry. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's why I enjoy like, uh, like say for example, like a game that I play, like I'm not much of a gamer, but I'll, I wouldn't even call this like a game, but like poker, right? Everyone gets dealt the same two cards yeah. in like Texas Hold'em. It's like, it's all dependent on what you do with it. You can go out and get a sketchbook and a pencil and then you set a beginner down and then see what they come up with and then you have like Jim Lee yeah. do something. Same same starting point. Yeah, same tools. Same tools. All it is is that faith that you're talking about of like, okay, keep yeah. pushing it. Wait. You start off with the bar right. when you're doing bench press, you know what I mean? It's like all that like and that's the thing like I, I quite enjoy is just like the, the level playing field where like everyone can start. It's not like F one racing. Well, you probably have to be in a somewhat like better off family yeah. to then start off with go-karting and then go into F1 and it's yeah. like a very like uh, higher barrier to entry to get into that kind of stuff potentially but here it's just literally go down like four bucks yeah. in the store you get a pencil and a piece of paper and away you go yeah. you just fill up a milk jug with like sand and now you got to wait yeah. you know what I mean you got like drums you got to bloody like flip a pan over and a couple of drumsticks that are not very expensive and away you go like it's that kind of stuff that gets me going the juice, that's kind of, I like that saying. It's like, yeah. it's the, the juice. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like, how do you start? How do you move past the fears, you know, the existential mm. nightmare of like, you know, oh man, I'm probably going to fail or this is really hard or I'm going to have to put in a lot of work or something. Yeah. And the, yeah, like every, I, I think there are very few people on the planet that are so poor to where they can't afford, 
you know, paper and pencil or, mm. you know, like a jug and sand or something. Yeah. You know, or even just push-ups or calisthenics or exactly. something, you know. Yeah. And there's always a way to start doing something that you're interested in, yeah. you know. And I think uh, part of the reason, part of the podcast for me, I've talked about this a lot, but um, I want it to be more than what it is, obviously. Like, I want a sick-ass production studio. I want a nicer camera. I want nicer microphones. I yeah. want, you know, to do like a lot more with it, but I'm only able to do it at this stage with what I have. You know? Yeah. Otherwise it just wouldn't happen. Yeah. You, know? you can't get to that without yeah. doing what you're doing now. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. yeah. Same stuff with me. I like want a freaking sweet studio, you know, like we've talked about this forever. Yeah. Wicked studio, warehouse, getting a bunch of creators together, doing cool stuff. But yeah, without doing like the reels yeah. and like starting off like with a little sculpts here and there and like just whipping right. up Photoshop and then starting streaming a bit. And none of that other stuff is is going to happen. So, and for me, it's like I'm like back in the um, like when I was starting learning to code and that kind of thing. It's uh, like habits are like the massive, massive thing for me. Yeah. Starting like ultra small. There's this wicked book called Tiny Habits. I think it's called Tiny Habits. And I just went like uh, like like it was my job to figure out okay how do habits work and like starting the smallest, most almost insignificant ways on a particular skill or thing that you want to do is like the key to getting it done. Yeah. It's like one push up a day, boom, done. Even half a push up, do it on your knees, right. you know? Like getting a pencil out and draw an eye, or not even an eye, like a, a note, whatever. A single line. Right? Single line, yeah. right? Or even, like it, like one of the things I've, I've learned is like even the laughable stuff. It's like, all right, just getting the pencil and paper out ready. And that's just what you've done for the day. It sounds ridiculous, right? But that, doing that for like a week straight, and then you have a set time that you go, all right, pencil and paper's out. Before you know it, the next week, all right, let's then just draw that line. And then by the end of the year, you're gonna start drawing stuff. Versus what I used to do was, all right, this is what I wanna do. All right, eight days, uh, eight hours a day. Right. Sketching, sketching, sketching. Then you miss a day. Then you feel like shit. Oh man, I'm, I've lost the momentum. Blah 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 blah. You just make it laughably easily, easy with whatever you're doing. So then it doesn't even feel like that you're doing anything yeah. while you're doing it. So if you miss a day, it's like whatever. Then I'll just hop back onto it the next day and just begin again. Well, and part of that, I, I, I think, is trying to it's trying to remove the judgment to, mm. towards yourself. You know? Yeah. Like, I mean, I think I've I've stopped and started so many times. That I just know the pattern now. Like you start to learn more. Like as you get a little bit older, you start to learn the patterns about yourself, and you're like, okay, it's just another. Like yeah, yeah I just hop on because I know what happens when I don't do it for a long time. Like I fall off and I feel bad, and you go through all that. Just skip that part and just next yeah. day, yeah, hop yeah, back on, yeah, yeah, or the day it. after, whatever. Yeah. Right. Just do shit. Just do it. Like well, it's it, yeah. And, 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 and uh, purely from just like a sustainability perspective, like you're not going to be able to do it all the time, mm. you know. And I, I think like. Uh, you know, pe people's lives get complicated. Like you have to take your dog to the hospital or something, mm. or you know, you're you know have to work out or go to the doctor yourself or you know do all, like any sorts, any number of things. Yeah. And I, I think that approaching your process or your success in that way is pretty much the only way to do it. I think. You know? Yeah. Like when you're focused on the you know 12 hours a day grinding, I'm going to take 50 classes, I'm going to do all this stuff. Yeah. It's not sustainable. Like you don't give yourself any time to let that like real life stuff kind of come in and yeah. you know like cuz that's coming in, that's yeah. coming regardless yeah. whether you're kicking ass and doing exactly what you want to do or yeah. if you're like procrastinating and not doing it the life stuff's going to happen. Yeah. And I found like without fail like I'll sit down okay this is the thing I want to do. And then like within a week shit will hit the, something will happen yeah. like as you said like got to take the dog to the, to the vet you get something happens in, per, in my personal life or a friend does this or blah 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 without fail yeah. it comes at like the worst time when you're just trying to start something and it always came with like the gym as well the hardest thing to like get started yeah. it's always like something that's like oh i got sick oh now i've got to be i'm out for a week you know what i mean so it's that stuff is going to happen yeah regardless and it's just something that i've kind of just like taught myself just to, all right, it, it is what it is. Just go begin again and just, just get to it. Skip the whole procrastination, feel bad for yourself sort of thing. And just, no one really cares. It's only you that cares. Like it's a lot of, a lot of people don't know that you're trying to do this thing. Yeah. So it's just like, cool, skip that, that middle part, the, the, the useless part and just get back to it. Well, 
and, and, and the real skill there is not the quality of your art. It's mm -hmm. your ability mm -hmm. to, to keep starting, you know? That is that is the yeah. thing. It's like, like with streaming, like I've, I've like uh, that was, again, another example of like building the habit. I wanted to get better at like being on camera yeah. for like YouTube videos. So I was like, all right, let's try this like whenever I feel like it. So then I just popped on randomly, yeah. did a little bit and then got off, popped on randomly. And then after like, I think it was like a good few months, the, only then I decided to okay create it somewhat of a schedule, and it's still only once a week. Like I yeah. didn't, I'm gonna be a streamer and then do it like four, five, six times a week sort of thing. It's just like yeah, still, still at once a week, and that's manageable. Like I do it, and I don't even think about it. Like if you just turned on OBS right now and had like the Photoshop in front of me, and I'd just be like, all right, no, let's, go. let's go. You just like go into it. You yeah. don't even think about it anymore. And like talking to people and doing the dance between like chat and the drawing and managing all the software and figuring it out. It just, because I've done it for so long in such sort of small bite-sized pieces, you don't even think about it. Yeah. So it's, yeah. Well, and, and, and that impulse to try to jump to the finish line, to try to be the like, oh, I'm streaming every day for six hours. I yeah. think is, is uh, it, it's for sure like an ego or ex, ex, extrinsically motivated decision. Oh, yeah. You know, you're yeah. like, you know, I, I, unless I am able to do this thing that I, it's not worth doing. You yeah. know? I um, mean, it, it comes back to the nihilism stuff and the why. Like, it's important to see the way you're spending your time and your uh, your own limited ability to do things as mm. important, you know, as uh, like, you know, it, it's not like you're better or worse than anybody else. It's just kind of where you're at. You yeah. Um, and, and kind of being realistic with who you are and loving yourself at any stage. Yep. You know? um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, loving yourself at any stage. That's, yeah, that's a big one as well. Like just being like yeah, really happy sounds fucking woo woo, but it's like it is. It's like yeah, like you you're enjoying where you're at at the moment, not always like living in the future or being annoyed at yourself that you missed X amount of days or a month on drawing where well, you would be otherwise if you didn't. Absolutely. It's just like you can't change that. Yeah, yeah. But 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 at the same time, you can be as logical as you want, and you can still feel those feelings. Those feelings are still going to come. Like yeah. I still feel that like on the daily. Yeah. It's like oh, I should already have like this uh like plain jane like the sculpture out already like i should already have that all figured out yeah, yeah. it's just like i think that and it's like well it's not and i can't change that yeah. so let's just go next day let's go yeah. what can i do to like put another brick on the fucking whatever yeah. the, to sort of get it going so yeah, yeah. well and, and, and for me personally like i go through that all the time like i haven't uploaded I put a lot of effort into that Riley Method video that I did, which I was really proud of. Mm. But I guess since then, it's almost been like a year or something. I, I put a effort into other videos, but since then I haven't been able to recreate that. Yeah. And I think it's been like, uh, like I have been busy with other stuff. I, it's, it's hard to do those things. It's mm. scary. And, you know, all the resistance coming in front of that, I'm trying to look at it as like, okay, like I'm at where I'm at. I'll do those things when I'm ready. Mm -hmm. like only when it feels ready. You yeah. Know? And the, uh, you know, looking at myself and being like, oh, dang, I, I should have done this or whatever. It makes it harder to actually do the thing. Oh, yeah. yeah to, 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 to sit down and do the work. It's like and, unnecessary as well. Yeah. Like if you just think of it like logically, it's just like having those feelings and letting them dictate your next moves. You're going backwards. Yeah. You know, like, it's, but there's also this other side to it. Like when I, let's say you're talking about like YouTube, it's like a video pops off. That's fantastic. But then there's pressure to meet that new yeah. baseline. Whereas before, you, it's just like, all right, I was just doing it. You're not too stressed about how it performs. You're like on the way up. But then one pops off and you're like, all right, that's, that's my new baseline. Yeah. If the next one isn't as good as that, it was a bullshit video. Yeah. I wasted all this time, you know what I mean? So again, all those thoughts, regardless of what happens, whether you do fantastic, whether you do good, bad, whatever, they're, they're gonna come. And again, I'm saying this, and I should take my own advice, but I know in the next week I'll feel the exact same way and I'll have like a downer sort of like afternoon or something. I'm just like, oh, yeah. it's just not working out the way I want it to, you know? Well, it, 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 the remedy to that is not more work sometimes. Mm -mm. I think it's like hanging out with your dog or mm -hmm. going, going to the gym or hanging out mm. with your girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever, you know? It's like, yep. you know, hanging out with your friends, playing Warhammer or whatever, whatever gets you into that creative mood where you're kind of feeling okay with yourself. You yeah. Know? And I, I think it's like, sometimes we procrastinate on the stuff that makes us feel better. Cause I, I, I think there's like a fear 
in the process, fear of like going back to that mindset mm. and then experiencing that thing all over again. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, um, we're trying to get away from that, like the, the bad emotions. So we're like, all right, I'm going to work through it. Work, uh, just yeah, keep going. Keep, yeah, no. Nah. I'd prefer to do like two hours of like really solid work in a day. Yeah. Rather than like 12 hours of like, I'm so busy right. doing yeah, yeah, all this yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Like, no, nah, two hours of like really, really like focused work, no interruptions, no nothing. Throw the phone in the bloody other room and just go and do that. And then have the rest of the day just to like, all right, whatever. And that's the luxury that we can have when we're doing our own thing as well. Yeah. Whereas it doesn't necessarily have deadlines that are reliant on, like other people have deadlines on us, yeah. which then adds that sort of extra extra stress yeah I, I i have people asking me like why don't you want to be a concept artist why don't you want to go do illustration why don't you want to work at a big company and it's that exact reason yeah it's because i think that from my perspective my logical perspective and i i know it's wrong to a degree and there are people that get past it but mm. having a studio job in that way i think can hinder your own development and creativity because you have to like uh compromise or push past those emotions without confronting them in a healthy way. Mm. You, know? you kind of have to push them down in, in, in a sense. Or on the other hand, it could build that muscle. Yeah, yeah. To hitting yeah, those deadlines true. regardless. Yeah. yeah. So it could be a really good motivator, like an external motivator, where you don't have the capacity if you want to keep that job. Yeah. You got to hit the deadline. So right. it's like, all right, you sort of just like David Goggins threw it. Well, <laughs> just I, I, like, I, I would say there are for sure people that you know people are cut out for that you know but mm. like knowing myself I, I don't want to do that it's just too stressful oh yeah if I had that option I'd, yeah. I'd much much prefer to not yeah to not do that but but yeah I think you could look at it both ways that it builds the builds that muscle on just getting the getting the work done because I mean I've been in that situation not so much with uh, the art side but with the software side when I was doing contract work the work had to be done like, and then you just don't it is a it is an interesting remedy to perfectionism when you've got a deadline because you just got to like really like 80 20 it just like what 20 percent of this is going to be like the stuff that I'm go I've got to get done yeah. 80 percent of it you can just get rid of like yeah. maybe you don't do this extra little bit that you were would have done if it was your project then da da da, da. just got to get it and just ship it go yeah. boom 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 so that, that's another thing like that could be a, a good thing in a way as well so it's it's all gray area there's no right or wrong with any of this stuff it's all um but now it's interesting man it's it's interesting i'm really excited to see where your stuff's going well, yeah, go i well. appreciate it well yeah and, and, and the whole thing like a painting is is like a self-exploration you know mm. you, you don't know you like you you have an idea for what you want it to be in the beginning you know yeah but it's going to shift and change and be something entirely i mean maybe contrary to what you're trying to do in the first place you know when you draw do you see a clear, like, something in your mind when you sit down and draw? Do you see that? No, not like, at all. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would say it's purely reactive. Yep. You know, it's purely just, I'm going off intuition. This shape works, I guess. This shape works, I guess. You yeah. Know? And I'm just trying to, like, be in the moment and let it kind of flow out of me in, mm. you know, kind of like in, in, in a purely, like, automatic way. Yeah. You know? um, which I, I, I think in some senses can be contrary to working in a studio. Like if, if that's yeah. what you want to do. You need, a, you need a reproducible format or formula that gets the work done in an efficient way to hit that deadline. Yeah. So I think there's, it leans maybe more towards a more structured way of working yeah. when it comes to that, which I do enjoy though. There's a part of me like like the development side that like that feeds that so much where it's just like binary. It's just like, yep, it either works or it doesn't. Yeah. All right, rewrite it so it works, you know? Like I do like that part. Like I've started to do more like thumbnailing and stuff to like kind of de-risk the end result. So it's like, all right, I can get a little bit of a look of, of what it's going to yeah. look like. And then I'll do like the final painting or whatever it is. And that's been fun to sort of dip my toe into that kind of more be in the moment kind of thing. But also just have a little sprinkling of that reassurance or that more like structured way of working. Yeah. But um, it takes practice though. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah it, 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 it takes a ton of practice and, and effort and, that muscle of, of trying to be uh, creative or trying to be more structured or whatever, it's like, I know people who uh, work in comics or games or something who can't create art without a prompt, you know, because they, mm -hmm. they, they need that uh, structure, they need that mm -hmm. whatever else. And other people that 
can't create art with a prompt because they feel like it's holding them back too much. And yeah. for anyone listening to this, you know, there is no right or wrong answer no. to creating. It's just what works best for you. Could you say that the people that don't work with a the prompt, they do work with a prompt, you just don't see it? It's all just yeah, like yeah, up yeah, there. There's yeah. something, right, right, right. it doesn't come from nothing. Yeah. There's some sort of prompt where there is just like a thread somewhere up there that is like, oh, I'll go with that yeah. kind of thing. So there is something. Right. Like, and I think that is, that's like another thing that hit home with like a lot of people ask me, it's like, oh, geez, reference, like blah, 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 blah. Yeah, use the shit out of it. Like, yeah. if it's not going to be reference on a piece of paper, it's going to be reference from up here. Yeah. So it's like, don't stress it out that. But that's, yeah, whether everyone uses a prompt or if it just does come out of some, somewhere, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. I personally don't think too deeply about that sort of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. just do it and just like, yeah. all right, is it looking cool? No. Then do something else. Yeah. Try this, try that kind of thing. But... Um, well, it, part of this too is like you know I, I I make a point to try to spend time around like I, 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 I like some like really big people I made a like I, I was at Weta workshop all last week mm. you know and like some of those people they worked on the biggest movies like, yeah like the biggest so movies cool. and games and stuff yeah and hanging around them is strange because their creative process is exactly the same as everyone else's creative process like I walked in and Richard Taylor was drawing on a whiteboard <laughs> yeah and it was like this like crude drawing of like okay this this thing will go here this thing will go here. And then Greg Broadmore, he was like, "Oh yeah, that'd be cool. What if what if this happened?" And they're they're kind of like solving the problem on the. Is spot. that how they sounded? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, 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 they're totally gonna watch this. Too. Yeah, man. But, but I, I think it's like that. Uh, you know, uh, demystification of the process. It's not, you know, like I, I think in popular media or in culture, there's this propensity to look at. A master painter or piano player or whatever as you know oh it just they create this masterpiece without any suffering or something mm. you know and uh most of art making for everybody at every stage is a lot of suffering a lot of back and forth a lot of puttering around and yeah. questioning your mistakes and uh like there might be a stage like i don't like working from a prompt at all there might be a stage next year or in a month or five years or whatever where i'm like oh, i love doing I love it, it. Yeah. i love it you know um, That's the exciting part. Yeah, yeah. You don't know. Yeah. And that that uh, I was I was reading something. Um, I can't remember who, but it was I think it was on Twitter or something, where someone went to like the Norman Rockwell Museum and he was like looking at one of the paintings, and, like how perfect it was, right? And like someone was next to him, he's like, oh look at that. There's like no mistakes. Like it's just yeah. perfect. And the guy's like, yeah, well sure, I'd hope so because he did it like five times before. Yeah. And you don't realize because I think there's. Like the, the awesome thing with like the internet and all that kind of thing, it's like you start to see the behind the scenes of stuff. Whereas back then, you don't. You just see the final, yeah. like whether it be the Saturday evening post or whatever, right. or Sunday evening Saturday, yeah, whatever, it is, it's wherever Saturday, it is, yeah. whatever publication. You just see the final. You're like, whoa, yeah, freaking awesome. But yeah, like then you get like a bit of an inside scoop of how it was actually made. Like he took photos beforehand. He used photo reference. Yeah. Oh my god, like. He did the painting like multiple, multiple times to figure it out. So when it came to the final one, there's no room for, because he was working on the deadline as well. He yeah. had to get it out. So it's, yeah, it's realizing that everyone has a very somewhat similar process, I think. But that's something that I admire about you. You, you put yourself out there and you talk to other artists. Like I said, I've kind of come into the industry through the back door. I've not done that as much as I want to. Like I really want to start like connecting with other artists and, um, because I feel like I'm, a, I'm a, in a little bit of a bubble yeah. here in little old Adelaide. Right. Like I don't know any really any artist that I'd talk to here. I was like, I, I was the first person that reached out to you, right? And yeah, I think yeah, 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 one of the first and yeah. the first person that I connected on with the sort of the analytic side of things. Like I remember yeah. our first chat. Yeah. And we we're like talking about the back and forth of like oh the strategies, just like a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And I was like. Oh, yeah, there's someone out there that yeah. like gets me <laughs> yeah. it's like how do you monetize this stuff yeah exactly yeah. like yeah. from the business side and you got it like you, yeah. you understood that it's a because you've been sort of in the background of like proco and stuff it was just like cool to really yeah. chat about that stuff and be able because it's all just up yeah. here for the longest time right well and, and, and uh, you know that the, uh, there's always a double-edged sword to all this kind of stuff because I, I really admire you because like your ability to just focus on problems and solve things on your own mm. where I'm always trying to talk to people and like get validation for very specific ideas 
you know, you're just you're just going and moving ahead and like, okay, I'll try this and then this and this, you know? Yeah. And I, I think there's absolutely a balance to both where it's Yeah, like, just throw know, both of them in there. Yeah, yeah. And it's right. fucking really great. <laughs> well, and, and it's like, you know, again, going back to the painting thing, like there's a version of a painting you want it to be in your brain. Like there's a version of what I want to be doing in my brain, but it's not quite there. It's not quite exactly what I want it to be. No. Yeah. I want to be able to grind on a YouTube video and make it really good and have mm. everyone really like it. But my brain and like what I end up spending my time doing isn't necessarily that specifically. Mm. You know? I, 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 and I, I think just kind of like going and following my interests, it's leading to different opportunities, mm. you know, like going to Weta or going and yeah. working at Proco or any of that kind of stuff, you know? Yep. It, it's just different than, you know, the other thing. Yeah. And it, it's even I was, uh, I was talking to you about this the other day, like uh, I was listening to a new podcast uh, I think it was like Creative Spaghetti yeah. uh, that he had um, Gork's art on. Like yeah. he does these like, beautiful like cinematic YouTube videos, right? And I always used to think that, okay, he had it like structured out from the get-go. And it's just like, boom, write the script, do the B-roll, do the A-roll, and then do the voiceover, and it's just boom, 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 done. But then he talks to him, and he's like, no, nah, I like going back and forth. Like I'll shoot some things one day where I don't know what it's going to be but I want to use that shot somewhere. So then he puts it in and then he goes back and forth with the voiceover and then he changes the script and the story. Yeah. And it's like a very bad, I was like, oh, it's just the same as painting. Yeah. It's the same as like iterating on a drawing or a painting or whatever. Like there's like, there's diff there's all these different ways to do it. And whatever way that you're doing it, where you get an end result is the way to do it. Yeah. Like it's, yeah, there's probably more efficient ways to do bits and pieces, but that's what you pick up along the way by talking to people and like getting to know different people and getting different inspirations and that sort of stuff. So yeah, this, even like this year, it's become more and more apparent that what I'm doing and the way I'm doing things is okay. Yeah. I don't have to always be searching for like the most optimal right. thing. It's like whatever gets me in front of the computer or in front of the, the clay or the paint or whatever, that's, that's the thing that you should do. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it, it, and it's totally the same thing for things at a massive scale, like three hundred million dollar movies. You know, like like a Christopher Nolan movie or something. I'm sure they're going out and storyboarding stuff and uh, like figuring out things in a very experimental way from the very beginning. Mm. And then they're discovering stuff when they're on day on the shoot. You know, that, yeah. that's happening kind of accidentally. Like the clouds are in a certain spot that create this specific kind of mood. Or, yeah. You know, they land and they're shooting. I think on a boat, and like the waves are moving in a way that you know, creates a, an interesting drama. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it'll work in the opposite direction where this thing that might have seemed like a really great idea before shooting it is, oh, it, oh, it just doesn't quite work, yep. you know? And yep. the ability to throw things out and, you know, kind of uh, be uh, experimental with stuff, I think is part of the whole process of making any project, yeah. you know? Um, and it, like inevitably you're gonna, you know, make a painting or something that's gonna either seem like the best or worst idea and it's going to be the opposite of what you thought it was going to be. Yeah. You know? Like the best paintings or the best pieces of artwork, uh, you look at them a day later or six months later and you're like, oh my God, this is a piece of shit. <sighs> and it's, it's the same thing for the, for the worst things that you do, you know? Yeah. yeah, man, dude, that happens so often. Like I look back at my Instagram, I'm just like, oh, yuck. Yeah. Do I delete this? It's embarrassing, but it's it's gonna happen in a year from now from something that I do tomorrow. Yeah, it's, it is what it is. But it is what it is. It is what it is. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, and, and for Christopher Nolan, you know, like I, I, I uh, saw an interview with him and Stephen Colbert, where apparently he's a giant fan of the Fast and Furious movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he's seen, yeah. he's seen them all multiple times. You know? That's awesome. And like you would expect, like, oh, he's like seen as the modern day great director of our time. Yeah. You know? Um, uh, uh, him or Dennis Villeneuve or whatever how you pronounce his name but yeah they're, they're seen as like the greatest directors of our time and um, you know he's uh, watching movies and really loving movies that are akin to like kitsch or, or mm. things that are kind of cheesy and corny and stuff and, yeah. um, and that being part of what he consumes is probably influencing his like more serious you know oh, yeah. like war films and stuff yeah and drama and all that definitely like the the audience might not see it directly but you, he could probably draw a, a connection back to yeah. different movies that you'd be like what really like yeah. okay well and it, i remember him also saying in an interview where his like he, you know he spent a portion of his career doing corporate uh 
corporate movies. So he'd go and interview a CEO for mm. an internal memo or something. Yeah, right. Yeah, he yeah. was saying that, that those things actually helped influence his career in terms of like learning about lighting and learning about you know shooting uh, a portrait to be a little bit more interesting. Yeah, the nuts and bolts of it. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. Right. That's that's awesome. I love that. Yeah, yeah, it's fascinating, you know, and it's like. Uh, those things actually might have cult done more for cultivating his love of filmmaking than going and trying to work on his initial like biggest movies. Yeah, think, you know, definitely. Yeah. It gives you you've got something to work with. You've got a bit of knowledge, just enough knowledge to get in trouble. Yeah, and then you go off and use that to then create the thing. I love that. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Um, well, I need to, for for, for uh, do you want to talk about Plain Jane at all? Um, oh yeah, if you want. Yeah, well, if yeah. Uh, well, so so for, for anyone that doesn't, that doesn't know, Ben has created a uh, reference sculpture. Um, I don't have one. Uh, well, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll I'll explain it real quick and then do, yeah. Do, do, uh, I'll, well, do, I'll uh, dip out. Uh, yeah, and yeah, get yeah, one. yeah, yeah, yeah. So so Ben created this reference sculpture. Uh, he knew a little bit about sculpting and resin casting and all that kind of stuff, but he's spent the past like I don't know six months or something building this thing. And it's this really, really cool resin sculpture that's meant to be like an Asaro head type thing or a reference thing that's stylized. So uh, to me, the, the really like interesting and compelling part of it is like looking at a problem and looking at a thing that you're interested in and then like solving the problem of like, okay, I'm going to make this thing from scratch. I'm going to try and like figure out the business of it, the content stuff. And it was like, you know, you're... Uh, Sculpting, you know, like you, 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 you were getting into sculpting as like a beginner, right? It was just oh, I knew nothing. I just yeah, yeah. popped down the road, yeah, uh, found somewhere that sold the clay that I saw on some YouTube yeah. video, and I was like, "Do you guys have this?" And they're like, "No, but we've got yeah. this." Yeah. I'm like, "All right, that'll do." Yeah. And then I just like, so yeah, so these are like the clay versions. I don't know if you can see them. Yeah. Like, so this is after getting her out of the mold. She's absolutely bloody destroyed, but um. But yeah, there's like a bunch of iterations, like little ones, big ones. But this is the original that was made out of the mold. And then you got the sort of final production resin cast kind of thing. So it was literally starting from just like a block of clay and then trying to figure out something that I'm like kind of happy with um, to then, yeah, get it out and then figure out the business side of it. Like what? Yeah. Well, at this stage of um, it, you know, being out in the world, it, you you have not released this yet, right? No, so, no, no. So, I've so, just started to do a tiny little bit of like the talking about it, yeah. and um, sort of a bit of content around around it. But that's going to be a whole discovery as well, because I really want to have this as part of like the business side, is like selling physical products, because I never sold any of my art before. Yeah, like that's this is like a whole new thing. I've got a printer here that does like art prints now, so I can sort of do that. Yeah. Um, as well, but it's like yeah, trying to figure out the whole, the whole business side of yeah, of thing. this is just as fun. Even the packaging, all the packaging around this is like screen printing. I've sort of like had to figure out screen printing for the box and yeah. um, and the bottoms of it as and well. the bottoms of it. Like you gotta yeah. like make sure that she's sealed. But then I'll screen print like a a thing on that to then do like the one of however many. Yeah. Um, sort of sculptures there are and blah 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 and then it comes with like a booklet so i've got to figure out like designing the sort of layout for the little booklet to show like how you can study with her and that kind of thing and then like stickers like it's all just this whole learning process yeah that like now it's getting closer to being done i'm already thinking about the next thing it's like oh yeah. what can i do to like improve it and like figure out the next thing from like a marketing standpoint like getting the website ready and da 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 da, da. Like, it's all just bloody fun yeah. but at the same time it is stressful because i've got to keep the other thing going yeah in the background I've got to keep the content because this takes a lot of time yeah to uh to try and figure out like yeah but uh but nah, it's good fun good well fun. and for anyone listening to this whether this is a, a a massive success when it's launched or not um it's like you know, you, you, you have no idea whether it's going to be successful or no. not. Yeah, you know, it's just like trying it to the best of your current abilities and, hmm. and then just seeing what happens. Yeah, you in know? 10 years' time, I'll be like, oh, I wish I did this, I wish I did that. Like, I've yeah. got ideas about having this as, like, a fully, like, magnetic, yeah. like, you can pop it off and, like, have, like, different expressions yeah. on, you know what I mean? Like, it changes, like, from male to female and, like, all that kind of... Like, I've got all these different ideas. Like, I want to do hand sculptures. I want to do, like figures and that kind of thing. I want to do paintings, oil paintings. I want to do, I want to do it all, yeah. which is a blessing and a curse because 
There's only so many hours in a day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's freaking annoying sometimes. Yeah. But um, but yeah, no, it's been a fun, fun little process to uh, to try and figure it out. And yeah, like from where there was like three others yeah. from like this one, like this is one sort of version of the head that sort of just is out of clay. Like these, I'll melt these down to make uh, to make another one soon. But yeah, got some others over there. But yeah, it's it's fun. Like and, and even like, even from like different things helping different, like uh, like uh, different skill sets helping other skill sets. So like learning how to sculpt in real clay has helped with um, like digital sculpting, yeah. right? And vice versa. Like I started digital sculpting before I did traditional sculpting. Then this has helped tremendously with like my painting and like understanding light and form and three D shapes and that kind of thing. Because I can like visualize it, like how, holding something in your hand that you've sort of made from like iterating. There's something about it, like it's it's pretty bloody, pretty cool. Just like just the process of going through it. Absolutely. So, well, and, and, and whether or not it's success or failure, it's still like you know, it's still something that you put your full heart and creativity into. Oh yeah. You know? well, and it's like I think often like people look at these creative projects like. Again, we have no idea whether it's going to be successful or not, mm. but it was still made. You know, it still took all yeah, your faculties and stuff, yeah. and you still made it. And from that sense, it's it's a massive success. You know. Yeah, exactly. I'm happy. Yeah. Um, uh, like I'm. Yeah. Happy. I mean, I would like them to to sell. Like, yeah. I mean, there, yeah. there's yeah. there's, there's that part. business part yeah. of me is just like, yeah, yeah. I put, spent all this bloody time and money into it and got yeah. all this like equipment and shit. And it's like, yeah. oh, I do want it to sell. Like from a business standpoint, yeah. but it's like, yeah, I figured out the boxes. I figured out the. The packaging i've done it all myself it's all in-house there's no outsourcing because that would have been the other route to go like send the like a 3d model like this is hand sculpted like i could have done it in 3d send it off to like a, a factory wherever and then got them to then ship it back and i just pay the money and it's yeah. sort of done but it's like uh, the fun is in the process of yeah. like figuring it out and doing like Doing it myself, well, like, and, yeah. and, and the value from a consumer perspective as well. You know, yeah, handmade. It, you know, for uh, anyone like trying to you know make a, a their own online independent business, a lot of it is that sort of experimentation and kind mm. of process oriented stuff. You know, yeah, it's not the like knowing what it's going to be in the very beginning. Like you, you had an idea for a reference sculpture, and it just turned into this thing as it is right now. Yeah, you know, um, and. Like, I, I, again, like your idea from what it was in the beginning might have been more akin to like an Asaro head, you know? Like, like exactly. Yeah, it, 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 at the beginning it was just the yeah. this, but yeah. then it turned into, oh, I want to add like the the booklet that shows people how you can actually yeah. study with it. I, I want to like add in stickers just like as a little yeah. thing. I want to add in like the art print that goes along with it. So I needed to get the printed to then do the art print, figure out the settings of that, then figure out I wanted this specific design on the box. But to do that, it costs a frick ton of money with the scale that I'm doing it at the moment. Yeah. How do I do that? Screen printing. What screen printing? How does that work? And just going through the process, buy the screens, buy the inks, buy, buy the boxes, do a bunch of fail to tell like there's so much failure with the screen printing oh my god this can be just a podcast in itself but like it's um yeah it's like now coming out the end of it i'm very very happy with uh with yeah it's just done yeah it's, 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 oh, it's getting it's getting there it's yeah. not quite done i've got a, a fair yeah. bit of work to do but it's yeah it's getting there yeah well yeah, and, and that and like throwing out the bases as well because you initially wanted to do bases. Yeah, I did, I did want to do bases yeah. with them, but they just weren't to the quality that I wanted to, and I need to figure out a different way of doing them. So then they will be probably by the time I start doing like special editions of those where I actually like air, airbrushing as well. Yeah. Like I'm going to do like a half where she's like fully painted. Figuring out that, that's when I'll introduce the bases. So it's not lost. Like all the stuff that you've worked on before is not lost. You can use it yeah. like later on on different projects and that kind of thing. But yeah, it's just... It's a lot of the uh, the trade offs and bits and pieces. So, but yeah, yeah. No, it's well, good well, fun. And, well, and, and, and purely from a creativity perspective, it's like you're like just wandering through the fog. You know, you oh, have, all the fog. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah well, and it's like for every single creative thing. Like I was talking to the Weta people, um, they'll do ten different projects, and eight won't make money, and then two will pay for the rest. Oh, yeah. Know? And it's like I, I think that's always the case for any creative endeavor. Like most things. Are going to fail, but then sometimes they hit and they actually pay the bills. Yeah, you know? and I, I think that's why it's important to try to at least be in control as of like, 
And, well, not being controlled, but be comfortable with your finances, be comfortable with mm. your process, be comfortable with like where you work every day, because the goal is just to work for long enough to, you know, hit a point to where it's becoming sustainable kind of on its own, yep. you know, kind of doing the thing that you love doing. Yeah. yeah. And it, you don't have to, I don't think you have to always be going through the fog a thousand percent. Like for example, with the art prints, right? Before yeah. I did a lot of this, I asked a question in, in my stories. It's like, all right, I'm thinking about doing prints. It's not going to be print on demand. I'm going to be doing it myself. How many people want to do that? Like, would you like to see that? Then I had like 400 people say, okay, yeah, I would like to see that. So I'm like, okay, that kind of de-risked it. Yeah. And it was kind of an excuse to be like, all right, if I can get that, then I'll go and buy the printer. So I was like, all right, I got that cool. I went and bought the printer. And it's like, okay, there's some sort of um, interest there. And like before this, it was like sandbox experiments. Like I did little sculpts and then I put them on reels. I put, did stories. I did um, uh, like little behind the scenes and that started to get yeah. some traction and some people were interested in it. So it's not completely through the fog like... I've had people ask about buying these as well. So yeah. it's, it's not 100%, but it's like you've got to put yourself out there a little bit as well. That's where the business side comes in, yeah. and like the content, and like that's justifying me spending all the time and right. um, experimenting with it. So it's, yeah, it's, it's not completely de-risked, but it's de-risked enough to me, for me to, yeah, place the bet and say, yeah, let's, let's give it a go. Absolutely. Well, and for all this stuff, I, I think the, you know, I think there's always a path in front of you. It's just, you know, your experience with doing other projects, you know, again, the software stuff, the, you know, baseball stuff or whatever, mm. probably has influenced the, you know, your ability to create a business or a product, mm. you know, and it just reveals a little bit more of the path along the way. It, it kind of clears some of the fog, you know, yeah. as you just create more stuff and kind of figure yourself out. Yeah. And that's the only thing that you're really trying to do is just find a way through the fog, you know, mm -hmm. and there's a billion different ways for directors. It's like, you know, you, you almost have to start doing, you know, uh, corporate movies. You have to do, like, yeah. you, you know, because that's... Shooting your friends in the in high school or whatever yeah, yeah. it is, yeah. Well, because you're, you're just figuring out, you're, you know, you're solving problems. You know, it's like, uh, like, what cameras do I use? What's yeah. aperture? What's, like, you know, color balance? Like, you're just trying to figure out, like, how, do, how does a camera work? You know, mm. and then storytelling with, like, framing a shot or something, which can be done, you know, with a student film or something. Yeah. Or, you know, some corporate job. Um, and for, for me, it's like this podcast, I have no idea what it is, but I'm slowly figuring out the process to like making it sustainable and trying yeah. to offer things of value to people like my, my mentorship that I host, like for anyone that's interested, I have a mentorship on my Patreon in the description, <laughs> but yeah, yeah it, it, in it, I try to provide actual genuine value talking about this stuff, yeah. you know? talking about like, okay, how do you navigate through the fog and the mist of trying to make a creative career work? Mm. Um, I, and like, um, I have no idea and I, I suspected I didn't have any value to add in the very beginning of my career, but as I'm getting more validation from other people and other people are signing up and telling me, okay, this is cool and yeah. you know, it's nice to have this. It's like, okay, you know, maybe I can keep scaling up from there. Maybe I start offering a course or something. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't start, it starts out with me like building a van in my friend's garage, you know, yeah. and, and installing shiplap and, you know, sweating and, and stuff. That's it, yeah. man. Um, and like, it, it doesn't start with one thing without the other. And uh, Yeah. And look, I'm a fan of this podcast as well. So it's an absolute honor. I appreciate it, yeah, To be on it, man. It's very like kind it's, of you. it's yeah. some of the, the insights that I've gotten from, from the interviews that you've done, the, the guests that you get is phenomenal. Absolutely. Yeah. So well, thank you. I appreciate it. And, uh, for, for people listening, my, my general uh, con like belief in myself or my general impulse is to be a little bit uh, more on like the self-doubtful side, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, for anyone that is thinking about starting a podcast or a project, you know, I, I, I generally think I'm one of the most anxious people I know. And the uh, only way I've been able to kind of alleviate some of that has been doing projects like this, mm -hmm. you know? Being like, oh, okay, like, it's not as scary as I thought, you know, talking to a ton of people and mm. driving around is not as terrifying and, you know, horrible as, as you would think, you yeah. know, you just kind of figure it out along the way, you know? Yeah. But when you think of like, I've done, I think like 80 of these so far, Far like up. like if I were to Shoot. think of like oh I have to do eighty conversations I have to edit eighty oh. podcasts all that stuff I never would have done it you know <laughs> it's just too hard yeah 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 yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, definitely yeah. man just it's the same it. with this like yeah if I knew all the all just the little like 
oh, I've got to pay for this, got to pay for this, got to pay for this. Just like that's by a thousand cuts. Just yeah, like, yeah. Oh, all right, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm in too deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pot committed. Just go, yeah. go, go. So yeah, I probably would have. No, nah, I would have done it, but it would have been harder. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been a lot more stress. Right, <laughs> stress right. ridden. It's almost like uh, it's like uh, how like you become immune to stuff like by little. Yeah. Like you, you actually get give the disease to you like little by little or whatever. Yes. It's the same thing. It's just like oh, a little bit. Yeah. Little bit, little bit, little bit, then you can yeah. take it all on. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll make another one of these like after this drop. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'll I'll do a whole start a new mold, I'll start a new sculpt, blah blah, yeah. and I'll do it better. Well yeah. it, it, it's the same thing for exercise. You yep. know, or like cold, you adapt. cold exposure. Oh you know? yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like then a, the ice bars, dude. We've yeah. got to do before you leave, we've got to do a freaking ice bath. <laughs> That'll be sick. <laughs> They're amazing. <laughs> You're gonna feel so good. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, it, 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 it has to happen today or tomorrow morning. It will. Okay. It has yeah. to. We'll um, figure it out. Well, and, and for all that stuff, I think it's that incremental progress. And again, I think it, it always comes back to just simple, like, you know, like finding meaning and like pouring yourself a cup of tea, you know, mm. or finding meaning in just like drawing a single line, mm-hmm. you know, finding meaning in very simple things. And like when you break down the moment to moment process of a, a masterwork, beautiful painting that has had this giant cultural impact on everybody, um, the artists like Leonardo da Vinci or Rockwell or like the people we see as the greatest artists, it's just like mixed paint stroke, mm. mixed paint stroke, you know? Yeah. And it's like in the moment, it's very, very boring and tedious, you mm. know? But that compounded effort over six months or a year or something turns into this amazing piece of artwork yeah you know? dude um or a building or, or whatever yeah you know? oh it's good do the work yeah oh i want to get to work yeah what okay, are we yeah, going to yeah. do after this okay, yeah. <laughs> um, cool uh well do you, uh, uh do you want to wrap it up there yeah let's yeah. cool. we'll wrap it up it's good good cool. place to absolutely good place to stop i reckon cool. uh how should people follow you online oh you can figure it out you smart people <laughs> ben eblin.com ben eblin design on instagram um We've also got a podcast that we'll be doing later on today. Yeah. We'll make now, I think, later, like all the behind the scenes, uh, numbers, analytics, purely businessy sort of stuff. Um, so you can, yeah, all the links and stuff will be in the description. Cool. You know, Sick, man. Thanks. Yeah. And uh, also, Plain Jane. Uh, keep an eye out for Plain Jane. Yeah, that'll be on the website. Yeah. So, yeah. Sick. Awesome. Sick. Thanks, Thanks dude. Man. Bam. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Cool. Mm. Is that all right? Yeah.